I think it's important that the community understand that graffiti has a significant impact on the city of Hamilton, not only financially, but on its image. When there's a lot of tagging and graffiti around, it creates a general idea that it's not safe. Graffiti is a crime and it's enforced by the Hamilton Police Services. So what's really, really important is for people to understand that if they witness a graffiti crime in progress, they need to call 911. Certainly graffiti is a crime. Uh, if you see it in action, it's a 911 call. Uh, otherwise, we really encourage everybody to report graffiti. Graffiti promotes negative image. It promotes the idea of crime, gang activity, and people get very, very na uh, nervous when there's a lot of graffiti around. It really degrades a neighborhood when it ha there's graffiti in it. It's, you know, everybody's well familiar with the broken window theory. So the quicker we can remove that graffiti and get the neighborhood cleaned up, the better it is for everybody. Something is coming Alright, so can I get you to say your name? State my name? What do you mean? Like the name I write? Fuck, I never wrote any specific name. Fuck, who cares its name? Like the point of it is the, the art of the letter. I don't know, I was just more into drawing letters. And uh, specific letter combinations like that, that appealed to me. Uh, I took a bunch of photos and studied them afterwards. Uh, and, and studied them, you know, almost every day uh, and tried to figure out how they got from point A to point B because that, that was the part of the, the allure of it to me is the mystery on like how, how do you do that I mean at the time like I didn't even draw it was just kind of starting from square one like I had no, you know, no real experience with being visually creative before then and, and that was kind of the gateway In 2009, police reported incidents of graffiti in Hamilton were approximately 500 incidents. Last year, it reduced down into the mid 300s. Uh, there was about a 30% decline in graffiti reported to the police. Now keep in mind that not all graffiti is reported to the police. These are two volunteer initiatives. The first one is Adopt a Park and uh, that encourages neighborhood groups, associations, service clubs, business to adopt a park. They go in uh, minimum four times a year to do litter cleanup, uh, wood chip, uh, the trees, they do do graffiti cleanup. Behind me, we uh, did an extreme park makeover at Birch Park uh, in Ju July of 2011, and that's part of a TVO special called The Giver. And we, uh, we sort of did a test site to see this was uh, an area that had lots of graffiti. Even after we cleaned it up, it would be repeated. Um, so we engaged over 300 local volunteers over three days, did an extreme park makeover. They benefited by having some great uh, new equipment installed in the play structure but we also uh, demonstrated three different types of uh, murals so in the backgrounds a, a mural where everybody who volunteered got to put their face on the concrete um, we had uh, a local uh, rotary club summer literacy program do murals along the fence and um, we did a, a paint over some of the graffiti so it's a great demonstration of how we cleaned up the area and it's been graffiti free since Graffiti is most prominent in areas that are somewhat secluded. Obviously, they don't want witnesses to see them doing it, although they want everyone to see their work after the fact. Man, that, that walk coming in here, oh, it's unreal. Like, it's, it's just such a simple walk, but... I mean, the excitement that I get every single time, like it never changed. It was awesome. It was just that like eagerness, anticipation, like I was coming to do something that was like so fulfilling and awesome, you know, just.
know, anybody could come in here at any time, but it was just so relaxed that, you know, that you just put it in the back of your head and you just, you just do what you came to do. It was really cool kind of knowing that, you know, there's thousands of cars going above your head every, every time you paint and nobody has any idea you're down there. I did have, I had a lot of social anxiety and chilling here, and putting myself out there and just and just just getting it out on the wall was a huge huge release. I never talked about it. I, I still don't talk about it because I've kind of overcame it, and it's just you know it, it was just like a personal thing that that I knew I had to overcome. And this doing this was comfortable, and that level of personal comfort and and realizing like who I am and what I like and what I want to do that really that really helps. You know, like it, there, there was no fear of judgment putting a piece up. You just put it up and people walk by it every day and they see it and I mean, they can like it or love it. They weren't, they weren't judging me. It was just, you know, it was the work. So Hamilton does not like legal walls. And I think that's pretty standard now across most cities. There's been a lot of research done in regards to legal walls all across North America and most cities are of the belief, their studies show that legal walls actually have a negative effect on the neighborhood because you're giving them consent to paint a wall, whether it be wood or brick. And what it does is it kind of welcomes them into the area and says, it's okay. And what we find is that the tagging and the graffiti then starts to spread from that legal wall out onto, onto venues that are not legal. Oh, man, I painted this piece uh, solid seven years ago, maybe. Maybe a little bit longer. I mean, the only reason why we're here is because there's there's not left like any any public or legal walls. I mean, they're they're all gone. Uh, I just not these people hide like it's a metal fence, and uh, you know taggers and vandals love to to, to write on metal uh, just to feel of it. So it was, there's was new tags and throw-ups every day. I just ended up knocking on their door and showed them my sketchbook and uh, said, "Hey, can I paint this on your fence?" And uh, I basically told them that, you know, I guarantee you that you paint a couple pieces on there, nobody's going to tag your fence anymore. And it was what, like I said, eight years ago and there's no tags on there. Which I did get harassed by cops when we were here, they're coming, took all of our names down. I was like, dude, we're not doing anything wrong, like we're just painting, painting somebody's fence, we clearly have permission. You know, go knock on their door. We even had a signed letter from the people that own the house and we're still getting fucking harassed. I heard a lot of people talking about what they thought of it and it was mixed. I mean, some people appreciated it. Some people thought it was, uh, you know, they considered it vandalism just because it was letters, but it's the same, it's been the same fucking tired argument for, you know, since people were painting trains in Brooklyn. Our officers will investigate and if they determine that there is graffiti on a property, they will issue what is called an order to comply. It's a document that tells the property owner that they need to remove the graffiti and it gives them a time in which they need to remove it by. However, having said that, we, our officers can use their discretion. We must remember that property owners are victims of a crime. However, we need to work with them to remove the graffiti as soon as possible so that it does not spread. We do give them a letter that lets them know that we understand it's difficult and that they are victims of a crime, but we ask them to work with us in removing it. We also let them know about all the initiatives that the city is doing to work on the graffiti issues that we are facing. This is a youth facility that runs programs for youths. And I think that what they did as an outreach program, they allowed some of their youths to show their talents on their wall. But as you can see, the problem is that then further graffiti vandals come along and put their tags on top of the existing mural. And with time, there's decomposition of the mural. The paint starts to flake and peel. And what was once probably a bright, colorful uh, mural becomes an unsightly, decrepit mural. And then whose responsibility is it to clean it? 
it becomes an eyesore. Um, we're certainly not encouraging any type of uh, practicing of graffiti. Uh, we don't have any legal walls as of yet. It's something that our uh, working group is uh, looking at options. Some cities have done it quite successfully, some have not. Um, we're trying to deal with some of the grassroots issues right now and just battling and removing the graffiti that's there. A common scenario that an officer encounters is that they happen upon a group of youths at night, in the dark, with backpacks, and often with paint on their fingers. It's not too often that they're actually captured at the scene, creating the graffiti. Um, it's more usually after the fact, and then they're associated to the scene that they've just left. Well, this is, the, this is the place I got caught painting. I mean, it was the first and the last time I ever got caught. And it's actually the second time I've ever been here. The first time was, uh, you know, was that day. You know, we were painting right over there on that wall, and uh, I heard some people going through the bushes above, and I told my buddy, he was like, dude, we got to get out of here. So we packed up quickly and started going up the stream down there. Next thing you know, we got two cops coming from one side, another, and one other from the other side. And we shot a brick, so we start running down the stream. And next thing you know, there's another cop coming from, you know, the other side and realize we're surrounded. One guy took a run at me, auto baton out, smokes me right in the arm, huge bruise. And they said that we were running at them with our hands in the air and we were a threatening force. I mean, I don't remember the exact words, but it was something along those lines. I mean, realistically, who runs at somebody with their hands in the air? Like, who does that? I definitely lost faith in police. I mean, yeah, I know I was doing some illegal shit, but, uh, you know, when, when four, five, six cops lie and, you know, to, to cover their asses for giving a couple 18-year-olds who are painting a wall a beatdown, I mean, come on, man, there's something wrong there. After, uh, after getting busted. I mean, I'm still hungry, but it's kind of, you know, I still sketched, but over time, and we're talking years and years, not like within weeks. Uh, you know, the, the, the drive was kind of lessened because, I mean, I, you know, part of it was like just being at a wall and painting a wall. And uh, when you're worried about, uh, about getting caught again, I mean, you, you don't really want to do that. You know, I tried to find a lot of legal walls and I was having some success, you know, painting stuff like private property for people, like in their homes, like basements, you know, some uh, store owners, you know, hired us paint their property, you know, behind their buildings and shit. And we'd always get harassed and the store owners would always get harassed. So it just got harder and harder. I, def I definitely learned a lot from graffiti that has helped me throughout my life. I mean, just the, the ability to, to break something down into its smallest form and take it from you know, point A to point B in the quickest way possible. creative outlet has uh, changed, you know, to, to other visual mediums that are a little bit more uh, socially acceptable, I guess you could say. 